Alright guys, I'm here. What we're going to be doing today is Factorio. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen the YouTube or the last Twitch. Um, YouTube post has episodes 1 through 9. There are about 6 more episodes since that I'm going to post today. And this is a continuation of that process. Having a problem seeing the chat stream, so I don't know who he is here or who isn't here. Uh, DTC Sicilian used to co-host with me. Um, it's a little too early for him right now. He's in the uh, Pacific time zone, and I'm in the Eastern. Just to give you guys an understanding, this factorial game is um, pretty much RimWorld meets I don't know some other game like this. Uh, I'm missing my co-commentator. He tells me everything I need to know. What this game is about is building automations and fighting aliens. It's definitely an alpha project. This is version 0 .9, 0 .8. Uh, 0 .10 comes out maybe even today. They said the end of May. I'm currently about four hours into the game playing at a casual pace. If I were to have rushed this, I'd probably be maybe two and a half to three hours into the game. We have currently researched um, both red and green science kits. We're working on blue now which is requires petroleum and that's about where I am now. Fortunately with this game whenever you go to the research screen everything stops. To give you guys an overview of what this looks like this is the size of my, 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 my base map. Um, these red areas that you see here are where the biters are. And they are turned on to be aggressive so they will be bitey. My pollution is what makes these guys spawn, and that's the red area around the outside of my map. Uh, as you see, these guys are about to start getting some pollution. That makes them tougher and stronger. Also, game progress will make them tougher and stronger, too. They were small last time I hit them. Now they're mediums, most likely, with worms. And worms do devastating damage if you're not prepared for it. Uh, inside this, the city is a lot of um, pollution. Ways to combat pollution. It's actually not that hard in the end game. In the beginning game, it's quite difficult. Uh, you have modules you can put in here to slow down pollution by decreasing energy cost, or you can increase it also and really jack up pollution. Your miners, when running, use nine pollution. I can't show you on the right hand side, they put out nine pollution, which is quite extensive compared to these guys putting out 3.6 to smelt. And these guys are also smelting at a very um, fast pace. They put out two per cycle. <laughs> to help reduce my pollution, I have actually came over here and I'm making steel in two areas. I've turned off steel pollution here for a couple of reasons. Oh, Lauren, thank you. Biters do not evolve based on your progress but based on time. That is something I did not know. So are you saying that pollution only increases the likelihood of being attacked? But they're still going to be super strong. Now, uh, with the steel factory, it's turned off too. I was just making too much steel, and this this um, mining facility was not keeping up. I was losing metal at my far right area. This is where I'm going to start staging my stage three of science. And over here, I'm also going to start staging my stage three of science. So feed into about right here to my science kits or our science labs, rather. I was playing around with these um, turrets. I don't really like these um, gun turrets, so I was just kind of seeing if I could automatically load them. And look at these belts. These belts are solid with guns, uh, reload kits. So that's working the way it should, I reckon. And my turrets have 10 each. They did not fill up, so that's good news. They auto fill only to 10. So if I get attacked, I can kind of like ignore it. This is just a a low way to do this. Uh, Biter evolution factor increases by time. Spawners absorb pollution when you destroy a spawner. So when I destroy a spawner, they also force them to increase in size. Well, that's not good. These guys are already tough. Alright. So far, I've not been attacked one time because I went out and attacked them before they could attack me. And this base here is probably going to be next to my hit list along with this one. Some very large bases. I want to have lasers before I hit these bases. Well, with no further ado, let's get started here. To make the blue potions, I'm going to need a smart inserter automation. Unfortunately, I already have one for these guys. For the yellow, because it takes a yellow to make a red to make a, a green. Uh, I even think of blue, right? Let me check. 
It requires a blue. I don't need reds. I need yellows, blues, and then to make the greens. So I already have the yellows here, but I do not want to take away from this automation, which is actually right here. This bottom section creates my green potions. This top section, so simple, it creates the reds. So the bottom one here, the next one, is going to take quite a bit of uh, real estate to create these purple potions. Are you saying if I destroy a spawner, it adds 10 seconds of game time to their little function? Because I've been derping around, man. I've probably played this game right now, just a casual mode. The next game I'll be doing a speed run, that's for sure. I played this game for roughly four and a half hours, so I could have went a lot faster if I'd known that. All right, let's get some uh, resources down here. I'm gonna need a little, oh yeah, we can make lasers now. I think now we need batteries. All right, but all the technology is here now. So what should I increase next? Don't really need a four-stage automation. I don't believe. Let me see. That takes two, that takes three, that takes three, that takes three. Takes two. Nothing I have now requires a. F oh, what's that take? I don't need to automate that. I need to automate that. I wouldn't mind automating these assembly machines, but that's about it that I need to do a three. Uh, Four part conversion. Oh, I see what you're saying, Lauren. Okay, thank you. Yeah, 10 seconds is kind of short in the scheme of a <laughs> four hour, 12 hour game. Alright, so let's see. What's this one do? do I, want, I do want robots. Let's see if I need anything more important than robots right now. I don't really use the fastest production, I don't use green. Solar is going to be needed, but I don't have plastics yet, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to need engines, so I need engines and automation. I definitely want the electric furnace. Definitely. But that requires these guys, which I'll be making very shortly. So at least, you know what? Let's go electric and start getting rid of some of this pollution. Like I said, uh, electric furnace will make zero pollution where these guys produce 3.6 and these guys up here have not been modified. They pollute 1.8. But they're half the speed. So technically it pollutes at the same as these do. For the same amount of output we get. Okay, one moment. Let's get some uh, materials down here. Where do I want to steal from? I don't want to steal from these guys directly because I do want them to queue up. So we're going to steal from these guys over here. It's the same single chain, and we're going to bring it right around the bottom. Allegedly, that's my goal. I need a lot of materials to do this. Now, if you watched my last Twitch playthrough, which I did not post, I had almost all these things automated in general, and roughly half of these, and a few of these. It's just helped out overall, but this game I'm playing on a very small map footprint. We'll see how tight I can get this stuff. So far, it's kind of a struggle, I will admit. Did I make it already? No, I didn't. We'll do a single splitter. We'll upgrade to fast stuff later. Let's get one more in case I need it. And I've got two belts. Let's make two more belts. And quite a few more of these. And now I'm going to steal some precious resources from myself. I have a queuing section over here. I do, actually. Okay. When you do a split, for those of you who knew this game, it does split it up one to one exactly. So whatever goes on this side will put the exact same thing on this side and an exact ratio based on left and right side of the belt. It's kind of cool. You may notice a brief lag just now. That is the game saving. I have my save point set for every two minutes. Which is the default, actually. There we go. We've got that coming this way, and we can start our process. I wanted to feed directly into each thing directly. Um, 
I'm going to start doing some line queues along the bottom of the map because I want to start just being able to grab things as I need it. Here was okay, it's pretty simple, um, but not being able to grab things like these yellow guys. Whoops, <laughs> did I do that? Probably. Well, who knows? Not being able to grab these yellow guys or coils when I needed our circuit boards. It's kind of getting frustrating. So, what we're going to do is build the exact same thing we have here on this section just so we can make it toward the blue science kits. And again, I'll show you the blue science kits. They require smart inserters, which requires a yellow inserter, a blue inserter, and they make these next. So I'll have a, quite a long chain of assemblers making these things. Speaking of assemblers, if I don't have any, I have five. That's enough to get started. We'll need five more. Okay, there we go. Get my resources. I use F to pick up things from the ground, and the same way you use F, you can use, um, I think it's Z to drop it. You can just drop them on down if you don't need them. Nothing despawns, so they'll be there forever, unless you shoot it with a shotgun or something. So first things first, we're going to need to make this guy, which requires simply copper. I'm going to feed directly into this guy, which requires um, also copper. No, requires copper cable, which comes from here, and an iron plate comes from here. And then I'll need also on the side to make this, requires a uh, iron plate to make this guy, which requires three things, both an iron plate, an iron gear wheel, which comes from here. So the plate comes from here, the gear wheel comes from here, and the circuit board that I've already made will come from there. Alright, let's get that done. Now I'm going to go ahead and just use these um, assembly machines that are two. Even though these guys only, these guys here are the basic assembly machines. Um, and they can assemble things that require a two part, one or two part component. They can't do a three part component. But, if you look at the speed of these guys, 3 pollution, 0.5 crafting speed. Whereas these guys are 2.4 pollution and a better crafting speed. So it makes sense to use the machines. And the third level up, which I've not studied yet, is actually faster. Hey, who's letting me not do research right now? Come on, guys. What did we say we're going to work, work on? Engines? Is that what I said? I want robots? Um, no, the furnaces. That's it. Let's get these guys done. We want the electric furnaces. <laughs> Me already slacking off, not working. Gosh, it's a horrible day. All right, let's see as much real estate as possible to do this. So we're gonna put the coil, no, put the coil there. I should be able to grab. Let's see, these arms are kind of funny at times. No, no, no. We're gonna make the copper coil, which is third one over. Okay. Let's see if we can feed this bad boy. Doesn't always work around corners. Do I not have any inserters on me? Wow. Okay. Must have used them all up last playthrough. Let's just make some of these for now. I could have sworn. No, I grabbed them. I knew I grabbed some. Alright, so I got that guy. And some power lines. I have some power lines. Let's see if he can grab stuff. Oh yeah, no problem. Good. Usually around corners, guys, you gotta be careful. Uh, if the reach is just too far or too rough, it will not grab from that corner. And honestly, let me grab from this line over here. If it will let me. That'll make more sense. Keep that thing as far away as possible. Making the coils, okay. And then the output, some people actually make an output to a box or a track, and that track will run all the way around. You'll have multiple tracks eventually. Well, who wants that? So I'm going to nix that in the bud and have less than multiple tracks. I'm going to feed directly into this machine here. If I don't step on myself first. I think that'll be enough. Yeah, we'll do that. 
this production will be slow because this here requires three copper cables to one iron plate. So in benefits of science, what I'm going to do is actually have two of these facilities making copper cables.